morning. Today we're going to build on what we learned last time about standing wave patterns. As we demonstrated before, standing wave patterns can only be created at specific wavelengths and therefore specific frequencies. This demonstrates five different frequencies at which standing wave patterns can be created on this string. And again, like last time, I'll add a video echo effect to make it more clear what is going on here. Flippin physics. Bobby, what is the equation for the speed of a wave in a medium? Uh, the speed of a wave uh, equals frequency times wavelength. Then Bo, as the frequency of each demonstration increases from 15 to 76 hertz, what must be happening to the wavelength of the wave on this string? Um. Re remember, the speed of the wave is going to be constant because the properties of the medium, the string, remain constant. Right. Thanks. That means, according to our equation for the speed of the wave, as the frequency increases, the wavelength of the wave must decrease. Correct, Bo. Now let's determine the wavelength of the waves in these standing wave patterns. Bobby, looking at the first standing wave pattern, the one for 15 hertz, how many wavelengths are between the two ends of the string? Uh, I'm sorry, but I do not see it. Okay, Bobby, I will admit that the physical demonstrations are great for seeing what the real physics looks like. However, sometimes they are less effective at being able to see specifics. So I will replace the demonstration with static illustrations of what the waves look like. Does this help you to be able to see how many wavelengths are in the 15 hertz standing wave? Yes, Mr. P, thanks. Between the two nodes, there is half a wavelength. Great. Let's define capital L as the length of the string between the two ends. That means L equals one half wavelength. Therefore, the wavelength of this wave equals two times capital L, the length of the string. That looks weird. Why is the one in front of the parentheses? It's not doing anything mathematically. Valid point, Bo. I've put it there because there is one half wavelength at this frequency, and it will help us to identify a pattern later. Okay. Bo, how many wavelengths in the string for the 30 hertz standing wave pattern? It looks like there are two half wavelengths. That means the wavelength of the wave equals L, the length of the string. Correct, Bo. Billy, could you please do the next three? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the 45 hertz standing wave pattern has three half wavelengths, which means the wavelength equals 2L over 3. The 61 hertz standing wave pattern has four half wavelengths, which means the wavelength equals L over 2. The 76 hertz standing wave pattern has five half wavelengths, which means the wavelength equals 2L over 5. Okay, I see what is happening. The smallest frequency has a 1 in front of the parentheses, and that number increases by 1 as you get to each of the next possible standing wave patterns. That's convenient. Very good observation, Bo. Now we are going to add some numbers to this and actually solve for the average speed of the wave on the string in these standing wave patterns. I measured the length of the string, capital L, to be 0.865 meters. That means we can create a table and add all of our frequencies and corresponding wavelengths to it. We actually determined the equations for the wavelengths and the calculations are relatively straightforward, so I'm not going to walk through each of those. Actually, you know what? Bobby already gave us the equation for the speed of a wave. It equals frequency times wavelength. So calculating the speed of the wave at each frequency is also quite straightforward. We simply multiply the frequency times the wavelength. So I'm also not going to walk through those calculations. We can then determine the average speed for all five of these frequencies to be 26.1922, or 26 meters per second, with two significant digits. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I, I know earlier we showed that as the frequency increases, the wavelength decreases, which is exactly what we determined here. The, the frequency increases from 15 hertz to 76 hertz, and the wavelength of the wave decreases from 1.73 meters to 0.346 meters. However, are you actually telling me all of the standing wave patterns have roughly the same speed of 26 meters per second? I mean, that just not, does not make sense. Like, could you go back to the real demonstration again? 
No, no, not the one with the, the, the weird, like, reverb effect or whatever it is. No, the, the one that shows what is happening at 32 times slower than reality. Yeah, so this one. So, uh, you just calculated that all five of those standing wave patterns are all moving at about the same speed, 26 meters per second. But, but look at, at it. There is no way those five standing wave patterns are all moving at the same speed, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Great question, Billy. Thank you. Let me explain. So when you look at these five standing wave patterns and see that the string in the 76 hertz standing wave pattern is moving up and down faster than the string in the 15 hertz standing wave pattern, what you are actually observing is the frequency of the standing wave. 76 hertz, or 76 cycles per second, is more than five times as many cycles per second as 15 hertz. So the 76 hertz standing wave pattern moves up and down more quickly. That is correct. Exactly. Actually, no. The constant 26 meters per second we determined is not the speed at which the string in the standing wave pattern moves up and down, which remember is not a constant speed or constant acceleration because the string is moving in simple harmonic motion. What we determined is the speed of the wave on the string. Remember the demonstration I did last time of the wave pulse moving back and forth on the string? Well, that, that's right. Okay, standing waves are, are the constructive and destructive interferences of the wave patterns going back and forth on the string. Yeah, the oscillator on the left keeps sending periodic waves to the right, which interfere with the reflected and inverted waves, which move to the left after running into the fixed end on the right. That's what creates the standing wave pattern. Remember that whole animation thing he showed us? The wave speed we calculated in the data table is the speed of the blue and red waves moving to the left and right through the medium, which create the standing wave pattern. This is confusing. Yeah. Agreed. It is it's confusing. I totally understand. It, it is confusing, but that is why we are going through it. Well, great observation that we are determining the speed of the blue and red waves which interfere with one another to create the standing wave pattern. It is difficult to remember because in the real demonstration we do not actually see those waves which create the standing wave pattern. However, if we go back to the single wave pulse I created by plucking the string, realize we can measure the speed of the wave pulse. And it should be the same as the speed we determined using the speed equals frequency times wavelength equation. Right. All we need is the time it takes for the wave pulse to go there and back again. Here it is. Okay. Speed equals distance over time. The distance is 2 times L. The change in time is 0 0.068 seconds. So the speed is 25.441, or 25 meters per second, with two significant digits. And the percentage difference between our two ways of calculating the speed of the wave on the string is 2.910, or 2.9 percent. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's very close. I'm impressed. With the physics. Really? What? <laughs> Not with us? No, absolutely. I'm, I'm impressed by the three of you as well. However... The physics works, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.